afternoon and a wet and windy welcome from Jim, from Jimmy and me to what promises to be a unique football occasion. The first ever FA Cup final between Everton and Liverpool. And quite naturally, it's been dubbed the Merseyside final. And over the past 24 hours, something in the region of 80,000 fans have been streaming down the motorway from my adopted city, Liverpool, to be part of the day. I'm going to tell you that some people have paid upwards of £200 for a £20 ticket. You'll understand that it's a very special day indeed. And would you agree with that, James? Well, it's a lot of money, 200 quid, but it is a great day, Ian, isn't it? Yeah, marvellous for the lads of Liverpool. Liverpool, Merseyside now, twinned with Wembley, they say. <laughs> and they were all playing football this morning when we oh, came they, in at 8 o'clock. It was marvellous sight. A quarter past eight, there, there was 400 of them playing over there, all playing football, all, all mixed in. It was marvellous. Showing marvellous skills, cans in hand, not spilling a drop. It was really great, you know, absolutely tremendous. Now, inside the stadium itself, Jim, uh, the weather's been terrible down here in London, and I suppose yeah. the pitch will be very heavy. It was like that in the Milk Cup yeah. final, you know, a few yeah. weeks ago, and... Uh, not the conditions we'd expect for a cup final there, really. Not, not cup final conditions, Ian, but I don't think anybody who's here is that bothered, are they? Yeah. To be perfectly honest. I think you could play with Wellington's on today as long as they're playing. That's the main thing, isn't it? That's right. We're going to go back to the traditions of the game. And, uh, you know, as, as we do every year, the Saint and Greavesy go to the camps looking for a bit of fun as well as the football. Well, this year, Greavesy meets the double football of the year, great player, Gary Lineker of Everton, and the Saint, well, he goes back to his old stomping ground where he played before the war, Anfield. Well, here <laughs> we are in the old dressing room. And really not a lot changed in the club. This is where I used to park myself in the morning for training. And really, when you think about it, you know, Anfield, there's not a lot has changed in 25 years. Since my era in 1964, the team have won the league 11 times, with four titles riding in the last five years. It's a remarkable achievement. Well, here we are in the old boot room, and again, you know, nothing has changed. This is where uh, Bob Paisley, Joe Fagan used to plan all the campaigns for Liverpool. The players' boots all there. Ronnie Whelan's here. As in years gone by, the entire squad still catch the bus to work. Bill Shankly it was who began the tradition of players taking the coach from Anfield to the training ground. And the practice session is no different either. It's highlighted by the six-a-side match. It's a routine that served the test of time well. Now, Lawrenson with a chance. And Rush possibly with a chance. And Liverpool, right on the stroke of half-time, have gone into the lead. Nicole, Walsh, Lawrence in. beneath this and it's number two for Liverpool. Mulby now trying to get beyond Bond, and there was the mistake, and there was the goal by Rush. Run by Nicole. Oh, still going on. And another one by Rush. 2-0. That's it. Finishing of that quality is honed on the shooting boards of Melwood. Another Shankly innovation. I'll tell you what, Kenny, the shooting's going well today, isn't it? Ah, oh, they've got a good target team for. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, come on now, let's go in and get a cup of tea. Cheers, Leave sir. the boys to it. <laughs> you know, compared with, we can say, some of the others. Oh, yeah. Bobby! There you are, Greaves, so that's one back for you. Well, thank you very much, Jan. Good shot, that. Mind you, you couldn't miss, really, could you? Well, I'm here with a fellow who hopes to sink a few reds today. And I'm going to show him out, first of all. Foul, Gary Lineker, four. It's Gary Lineker. Gary, me son. Hey, you've had a good season, haven't you? Yeah, not so bad. How many are you notched? Uh, I think it's about 39 now. 39, that's not too bad at all. I tell you what, it's a long time since a player's notched 39, isn't it? I think Rushy did it a couple of years ago. He got a few more, in fact. But, uh, really? Quite, quite pleased with that. Yeah. It takes a bit of doing, though, doesn't it? Yep. Lineker. Can it be 
be two for Everton. It is! A personal landmark for Gary Lineker amidst the passion of a Merseyside derby. Has it all gone right for you? Did you have a bad time at any moment during the season? Because I had a bad time once for five yeah. minutes, but I got over it pretty really quick. <laughs> uh, yeah, we had a few spells where we went a few games without a goal, but nothing too prolonged. But you've hit it right at the right time because your last couple of games you've really been on target, haven't you? That's right. I re had to recover from a little hamstring injury I had and I've come back and I feel as sharp as ever and I've managed to score a few in the last couple of Was games. Was it three in one and two, two in, in the one. other? So you're the man in form. Well, hopefully. What about the man at the back? Because not many people know about him. Neville Southall got injured yeah. and Bobby Mims come in and he's done a good job for you, hasn't he? He has. Um, we all thought what a terrible blow it was to lose Nev, of course, which it is. Yeah. Because he's one of the world's best goalkeepers, and yeah. Bobby's come in and he, he's done a fabulous job. I think he's got about three goals in, in about nine games or something, and he's hardly put a foot wrong. And we've got every confidence in him for Saturday. I'm sure you have. I, I know Pat Jennings. I was talking to Pat Jennings in the week, and he's got every confidence in him. He says he hopes he doesn't <laughs> fall over during the night. Anyway, we are here to sink a few reds, my son. Yes, sir. Do you think you can do it? Um, I hope so. this is your game. How many how many breaks, century breaks have you had at this? Um, I've had two in proper matches and then I've had another five just practising. So, oh, so you've to... played a bit. Oh, a well, bit what's practice. an average break for you, girl? Um, I get probably a regular 40, 50 breaks. Do you? Oh, so it should be a good game between you and oh, I. should be close. Fair enough. Well, we'll give it a try, shall we? You're going well at this, aren't you? Not too bad. Hey. Very well. <laughs> Do I get to have another go? We're all Snooka, Loopy, Snooka, Loopy, that's our way. We're all Snooka. Gary Lineker, 123, Jimmy Greaves, 2. Well, I've just got stuffed 123 points to 2. But I'm going to get my own back on this fella because I'm away to practice and he can't anymore because they don't have any snooker tables in Barcelona, do they? OK. Oh. As you've guessed from these pictures, Greaves and I have been put through the mill on our visits to the Everton and Watford camps, and believe me, there's worse to come later. How are you feeling, Jim? 
Not too bad, pal. A little bit uh, stiff. The old back went a bit. Yeah. But listen, what's the story? How come all you Londoners are now Watford fans? Well, you see, the thing is, Sade, that <laughs> as you know, <laughs> Watford is a suburb of London. You know, the GLC is gradually moving outwards. So we're, yeah. uh, we've adopted Watford for the day. <laughs> You've got the glasses on to see the game better, I see that. Yes, absolutely. Now, I was making a bit of a name for myself with the other lot in Liverpool, and I suppose you could say I wasn't exactly the most popular guy at Goodison. Well, time to say heals everything, but does it? Here we are, Belfield. Now, I've never been in here to train before. I just wonder what sort of reception I'll get. Hi, Ian St. John. I've come to uh, train with Everton lads this morning for oh, the cup final. Hey, listen, there, there. Oh, well, there, you know. We're letting all kinds of riffraff in here these days, you know. Now, listen, don't hold that against me, you know, being uh, from Liverpool. Howard said it was OK because it's a cup final, like, and I'm, I'm really rooting yeah, for the Blues. Yeah, but get there. I'll tell you what, I'll let you in there, Ian, if you just behave yourself. No problems, I'll be here okay, myself. Yeah. Okay, Ian. Okay, sir, yeah. thanks, Sam. It's free, 6v2, OK? Try and keep possession in this little square here. Read it. Just a gentle yeah, start to the day, know, keep ball for ten minutes. But the problem was, they were keeping the ball from me. Oh, I'm going to give it to him. Here, them, here, this yes, You must give it Hold on, hold on. Okay. Here, oh. Howard, Howard, Howard. Yeah. Oh. You're ignoring me, Howard. Come. I mean, do you want to or not? Oh, hey? yeah. Hey? Uh, would you believe it? Yes, chicken. Victimisation. Oh, yes, oh. Just because I'm an old Liverpool player, they won't even give me a pass to the ball. There's so much for the school of science, but they've always been odd people at Goodison. And odd has to be the word for goalkeeper Neville Southall, his legs covered with shin pads, looking a bit like Lancashire's opening batsman. Well, Neville, explain uh, why all the pads, sir. Yeah, well, I got up this morning, read the paper, I mean, cut them up. <laughs> <laughs> Did the lads put you in cotton wool out? No, no, I've seen it this morning, so I thought I'd put a few pads on. Now, is that because of what, you've, there's no other goalkeepers? Well, Jim's pulled a thigh muscle on Tuesday against Man United, and there's only me left. Yeah. So from now to Wembley, it's going to be... Pads the, all the way. The cotton wool kid. Yeah. He's only Andy otherwise. We don't want him in goal. Really. Oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> well big, big Neville been out the game this morning under wraps. It looks as if I'll have to take over in goals. Now, never done this before, but I think I'll manage all right. <laughs> goals are a lot higher than they used to be when I was a keeper. Right, a few... Shots from Gary Stevens. I might not be taking some of the free kicks on Saturday. Right, Gary. Come on, son. <laughs> I'm allowed to dive, I know that. You're playing in my bad side. Well, it's two goalkeepers out again this week. Sorry about that, Saint. That's all right, kid. I'm a bit of power in that, let me tell you that. Hi. I like striking one every now and again. Yeah, so on Saturday at Wembley, you'll be taking one or two of the free kicks, will you? <laughs> I don't know about that, but I'll get up with the attack any time I can, yeah, sure. Now, I don't suppose it's failed your notice that there was a Gary Stevens playing in last year's cup final, and he scored a goal as well. Yeah, I was sitting in the stands watching him there. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. He's done well. So... I mean, this, there's not just one Gary Stevens. It's not a shout, is it? That's right, yes. There's only one, and he's at Everton at the moment. So there you go. So you're out to emulate him on Saturday? I hope so, Saint, yeah. I hope so. Yeah. Two men who I find who could head Everton on the winning trail did their impersonation of a couple of seals for us. Andy Gray and Graham Sharp proving that Watford aren't the only team who like it up in the air. Well, boys, thanks very much. That was great this morning. I really loved coming down here and joining in with you. Got the old blue and white gear on for the first time ever. <clears throat> I'm made up. Everton for the cup. Better go and get a shower now. I'll tell you what, you enjoy. <laughs> 
You actually, you you asked for that cold water, didn't you, with that shirt? I'll tell you, I was running away from. Did you notice that? Uh, yeah, <laughs> hey, you were. You were showing a clean pair of heels there. Well, as you know, I went to Watford uh, to the training ground when I could find it, yeah. and that Graham Taylor, boy, I can tell you what a tough man. You want to see what he put me through, Ian? Oh. Well, it's cup final day and Watford's become a suburb of London. I must say, it's a long suburb. First things first, fellas, you know we've had these kind of problems as regards uh, um, injuries and suspensions. And uh, actually, we've got hold of a fella. I've heard a few sort of comments about him. He's a bit of a goal scorer, but I've heard that his fitness actually um, is a little bit in doubt. But I think the first thing is that we ought to, to induce, introduce you to him and uh, you know give him a good welcome and don't don't laugh or anything like that because uh, this fella could win us the cup. Yeah, here you come. <laughs> yeah. Hello, <Bob. laughs> hey. I have heard the, yeah. the boss has told me that there's a couple of places still not quite certain. Is that true, boss? That's right. Centre half and goalkeeper. Is that it? Yes. That's <laughs> <right>. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Giving me some chance there, aren't you? Still, that's have a okay. go. That's, that's all right. right. No, it's, 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 it's nice, nice to see nice. you, all, lads. Yes. Looking so fit and well. We'll start off with the warm up. If Steve, John, and Tom can split the lads, take the groups that you want. Just let's do five or six minutes good stretching warm up. We'll go into the circuit first of all and then we'll just rotate that way, all right? OK. I think you might just get knocked down a little bit. Pull Come in now. Go. Now roll, Jim, roll. That's good. Oh. Oh. That's not bad. That's not bad. Top legs is again. Jimmy, what we mustn't have and what we won't have, else we'll be here all day, this isn't a press-up, Jim. And that's not a press-up, Jim. You see what I mean? Yeah. The press-up is there. Is it? Yeah. We come from there as there as quick as we can. Oh, I see. We get the chin in the middle of the... Oh, yeah. And get the hands and keep those feet down there, Jim. And all we try to do now is lift off the ball and look to the sky. We come across out that dorsal raise as yes. quick as a flash. Quick Pick as a these flash, up. yes. And all that we simply want is ten of them. <laughs> One, ten two. Of them. Now, what I don't want is that. You've got to get those legs over no, that that's, bar. No, that's quite and right. Did, did right. You, OK? You don't want that. You well, want some... Right up and right. over there, you see, Jim. Eight, two. Two. Three. And we go to ten. Now, what we don't want is this. Is, it, is ten the only number you <laughs> know, boss? All I know is ten. 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 Now, we start from here. Yeah. And let's see, Barnes, you just go over those hurdles for us. Double joint here. One, oh. two, round the post. Bit quick in that, because you were doing it, Charlotte. Let's go! One, two, the press up, Jim. All the way down. Three, eight, come on, Jimmy, eight, nine, ten. Come on, Jim, let's go, let's go. Look, keep thinking, with Barnes. Two, three, four, clip those heels, Jim. Six, oh, Jimmy, keep going, keep going. I'll pick it up for you. Now, up, we're going to go now, Jim. Off we go. Yeah, that's one, Jim. Come again. Two! <laughs> Six! Keep going, Jim. Up again! Emma, you're going, you've gone! You've gone! Come on, my son! Let's come again! We've got I'm a six-yard man. All right. All right, six yard box. There it is. And again, for you. well done. Give me the post. Your mind's going, Jim. You're two to go, Jim. Two to go. All right. Good lad. One. And it's a great effort, Matt. <laughs> don't, don't go away. <laughs> The thing is this, fellas, that the, the combination's been going OK, but you are the, the, the goal scorers in that sense, and I think between you, you've only got something like about seven goals in the last 11 games, so that's really not too impressive with a cup final coming up, is it? Yeah. Jimmy, can you, can you just yeah. come in? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is Morris Johnson. Yes, hello. Um, hello. Hello. Um, hello. Um, hello. Um, hello. George. <laughs> George Riley. It's, it's yeah. all right. I, I'm used to speaking to jocks every yeah. Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you get to understand. Yeah. Look, uh, son, I'm, I'm yeah. sorry about this. And, oh, I mean, sorry. the saint will do his nap <laughs> that I'm taking the place of a, a, a fellow countryman of his, you know. Yeah. But I think the boss wants to pump for a bit of experience. Yeah. You know, so I'm he's going to give me a go. <laughs> Kick him, Jumbo! Yes, John! You get in tighter, Richard, on him! 15 years ago, I'd have done that. Yeah, I think that's fair, Tommy. 15 years ago, we're playing on Saturday, aren't we? If you can't go in and get it onto that side of the ball, we may as well put Johnson back. All right, 
give me, give me a chance, give me a chance. Morris, what's he smiling at? Get on, son. You'll get yours, Johnson, I promise you that. Come on. Do you know the manager had to make that decision, uh, say, so how can you take I, the I place think, of a Scotsman? Well, yes, that, that was the tragedy of it all. But I, I think, overall, Ian, he's made the right choice. I think so. And I'll tell you what, that looked like pre-season training, didn't it? I've never worked so hard in my life. <laughs> I used to jib that when I was a player. <laughs> yeah, I know, I was made up seeing you doing it. Maybe to Richardson. And I'll read. And now Richardson. Whipping in a good cross. And shot. And a goal! His first cup tie goal of the season. And it comes at Wembley. Well, terrific play down the left hand side. And a good ball whipped in there by Richardson. And it was a challenge here to Stevens that the ball ran lovely for Sharpie and bang in off the post. Steven. Whipping in quite a good cross there. Oh, Andy Gray! And he's given! It came out of Sherwood's hands and Andy Gray has forced it home to put Everton 2 into the lead. Trevor Stephen whipping in the cross. Keeper had it, and Gray made sure he didn't keep it for long. Well, you might have noticed that in our review, we didn't go too deeply into that classic FA Cup final between Coventry and Spurs. We thought we'd leave that to our Jim here to reminisce on that and other memories with his old mate John Sillett, alias Snoz. Well, it's very beautiful, John. It's a, it's a long way from that row of terraced houses in Wandsworth, mate, where everyone used to live, isn't it? Our rooms there, Jim, one as good as these stables, no, where we used to live true. in Wandsworth Road. No. These are better than them. They're warmer. <laughs> in the old Chelsea days. Yeah. yeah. Hello, horsey. It's all right. That's a nice sort of horse, that Is one. it? Yeah. Young John's done quite well on that lately. And you? Yeah. Good up. So who built all these then, John? My father-in-law built all Did these, he? Jim. Yeah. He was one of those men that if he couldn't afford a bite, he built it himself, so... So he built all these? He went out and done all that. Did he? And this one is, uh This is George. This is George? Yeah. George! George. George. Come here, George. They all think it's George Curtis coming out. <laughs> yeah, well, it looks like George Curtis. Yeah, it's so big and strong. Yeah. <laughs> you'll remember that. He'll get you for <laughs> that. He'll love you yeah. for that. He'll bite your nose. How often do you ride, then? Not as much as I used to, Jim. Don't get the time now like I used to, but uh, I will get on there and again when I get in the mood and just go around the fields. And... What puts you in the mood? A uh, bad result or a good result? or? No, I, th I think basically the good results. Yeah? I think on the bad results, I think you find you're working harder and you're trying to get things right and you're in there all the time. But on a couple of good results, you can say, right, I'm relax a bit today. Right, and you'll, oh. you'll go out on old George? Yeah, go out on George. And just uh, right <laughs> George is always cheering for the opposition. <laughs> 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 I think it's George's fault why our results have gone like they have lately. Just, you know, he wants if, a break. If they get beat, George, you're in with a shout. You're all right. <laughs> yeah, good kiss. He's a good boy. <laughs> There's an amazing picture of the old team there. John, when you look at it, there's a few faces on that one, isn't there? Jim, they haven't changed a bit half of them, have they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I haven't seen... I don't think I saw half of them that day, either. Oh, I haven't seen them since. We never used to see many away from home, Jim, did we? No, this was at, at, at Bolton, by the looks of it, uh, John. I'll never forget we played there one day, Jim. I don't know whether you remember, because you always used to like going and going kickabouts in, in, in our right. training session. Remember yeah. our coaching sessions yeah. we used to have? Yeah. <laughs> when we just used to all stand there and kick a ball in a goal, <laughs> didn't we? And it was you and Ron Tinder would always go in and fly around. And Reg Matthews, our goalkeeper at the time, we were playing at Bolton, and Nat Loftus has come in and edited this 
sort of head of Reg Matthews and split his eye. There's got to be a two-inch gash there. And there was blood going everywhere and Reg is laying there. And I've never seen two players fight like you and Ronnie Tyndall. You dragged the shirt off, Reg. <laughs> you couldn't get in goal quick enough. But Ronnie Tyndall beat you to it that oh, no, day. Talking uh, uh, about the old days, but bringing us up to date, I mean, it, it's been one fantastic year for you, John, isn't it, 1987? Oh, Jim, it's, it's a year that... You, you dream about it, you know, really. You, you never think those things are going to happen. And it was a magnificent year. It was a year that all that you'd wish yourself happened to me, Jim. Yeah. Now, you had your cup run where you were at home to Bolton, then away to Manchester United, Stoke, Sheffield Wednesday. Well, I didn't fancy you at all beating them there. And then up to the semi-final where... With respect, John, as a player you'd played in the Cup and as a manager you'd been in Cup rounds, but you'd never got a team to the semi-final, had you? My feeling was make sure that I get everything right, that I don't miss a trick, that I do my job properly on the day. That was all I... I, I I'd hate it if it had gone wrong and the players come back and said, Sill, we never practised that or we never did this. Why not, you know? So I suppose you can say... In my career, that's the sharpest I've ever been and the best I've worked with. This is just what you didn't want to happen. We're, it's bad marking, isn't it? You know, you see, I think, was letting go. And uh, suddenly, I think, we are in trouble. Mm. But there again, a couple of moves happened just before halftime that you say to yourself, right, that's us, got over that. We're over our bad spell. I'm getting the feeling they thought that this would be their year. And if it's going to be... Going to go on to Wembley. Something dramatic has got to happen, and maybe David Bennett has done it here. McGrath missed it. Mickey Jen has it. Jin is there. Hatcher this time, and he's round day, and he's scored. And Coventry set here into the lead. Ready. Now Richie. Beaten two, Andy Ritchie. Edwards! Almost his first touch. And it's Mickey Jin to take the free kick. Regis, Alchin, and Bennett. You get to the final. Again, it went against you, didn't it? Huh? Very, very early on. Jeez, that was an unbelievable start, wasn't it? You know, like, an important factor came out of you and I having a chat, you know. We were talking here and you said, Sil, you've got to attack them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, that was... The vital thing I hadn't got to was my tactics of how we were going to start off. And mostly you say, now, for ten minutes, keep it a bit tight. And then go for it. I said, no, come on, we're going to go at them from the kickoff. We'll set the tempo of this match. And if we go at them, they're not going to be in our box, we're going to be in theirs. And I said, so that's a better way of stopping them scoring. So I put you right straight away, right. didn't yeah, I? Let's yeah, get forward. one down in two minutes. Two minutes, one down. Downs, trying to put a few things together. Regis, Downs with the left foot in again towards Houchin. A flick on by him. And a chance for Bennett. And it's 1-1. Last five minutes of the first half. 1-1 one, one the score. Hedder with the free kick. Goff is in there. Mabbitt is in there. Spurs are back in the lead. You know, I had a bit of a story there at halftime. I was a bit worried the way Waddle had gone by in the first well, half. You know, by anybody. Right, right? he's yeah. a super player, and he's yeah. a kid. And I said to Greg, he came in at halftime, and you sit all the team down, Jim, don't you? Yeah. And I said, right, you, Greg. I said, the biggest disappointment you told me in your life was not playing in the final for Norwich. You've got three minutes to get a tackle on Waddle, or you're going to have your second disappointment. You'll be off. You know, and you see old Greg, he goes for that. You know, he's a great pro, you, you're winding me up, you know, but he went out, and I'll tell you what, within 15 seconds, he's got that tackle in, bang. Gotcha. Mm. It remains a very, very good FA Cup final. And Gotcha! What a magnificent goal! At the end of 90 minutes, when it was 2 all, you looked from where we were up in the gantry there, uh, you looked at both sides and you thought, Coventry City are going to win this now because they look the strongest team. Your players were moving about. Yep. They, you were motivating them. The Spurs players looked a, a bit down. Lloyd McGrath, here come Coventry again. Pickering waiting in the middle. And the other end, go! That time by Mavitt. 
And the final whistle went and... Then, Jim, that was the happiest moment of my life. Then I felt... I struggled to stand up, you know. Did you? Mm, the old legs are gone, really. All the players came round and we, we just... We just got... For the end of the day, everything that we've talked about, we could achieve, which is walking up those stairs first and picking up that trash. Marvellous story, Jim. Uh, I w- mm. I'm so delighted for commentary last year because although I only played for them like six months, but uh, yeah. smashing club. And well, it. it's it's a great club. It, it's a lovely city, and good luck to everybody there, including my old pal yeah. Snoz. I mean, you, Snoz was digging up old pictures. Uh, yeah. We have an old picture of of you. The lads found this up in the office. What about that? You oh, drinking the old drinking milk? Drinking the milk. Well, I started drinking the milk twenty years ago. Went off of it, and now I drink it again. <laughs> Turn full circle, <laughs> really, isn't it? Manchester United fans take heed. Cyril Knowles has unearthed a possible Old Trafford star of the future. Lee Sharp won't be 17 until the end of next month. And as an apprentice at Plainmore, it's still his job to clean the boots. But next season, he'll be pursuing his trade among the glamour names at Old Trafford. Alex Ferguson has invested what could eventually amount to as much as £100,000 for a winger who's played only a dozen first-team matches for Torquay. It's goals like this that attracted Ferguson's attention. Sharp, who hails from the Midlands but has been at Torquay under the youth training scheme, was the star of the night in his team's recent thrashing of Newport County, scoring two of their six goals. Sharp's form in recent weeks has helped push Torquay towards promotion, and he's hoping that when he departs at the end of the season, they too will be moving on up. Sharp with a chance to retrieve this. Sharp again, Super Bowl. Must be, yes! Jim and Nicola scorer, but carved out by Lee Sharp. We're going to be at Old Trafford, which is a far cry from, from Torquay here. What was your reaction, and how did you come to hear about the move? Uh, I was in bed, and the manager came round the house with the secretary and said, would you like to sign for Manchester United? I was just took speechless. Just like that? <laughs> That's just come straight out of the blue. I mean, of course I agreed. I couldn't really turn it down. Had you had any inkling that they might be interested at that stage? No, none at all. None at all. It just comes straight out of the blue. What are your thoughts then on the, on the move to Old Trafford? Oh, I'm overjoyed. I'm overjoyed. Can't believe it. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I really am. He's quick. He's got vision, you know, and he's got a good left foot. And I think he'll bring a bit more out of him. I think when he gets with better players, I, I, I think he'll, he'll even come on more. And that's why I want him to go now, because I feel now, if he goes now, he'll get into good habits, you know. I, I, I've seen him in two or three games. He's got a bit of a name now. And I think full-backs, you know, are getting that bit tighter on him and they're not giving him a chance. And he's, he's been clattered once or twice, the lad, and I've taken deep breaths because we haven't got the money yet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I don't want anything to happen to the boy. You know, I want to get these four games over and get the boy up there. Yeah, I've got, I've got a lot to learn and I think, uh, I think Manchester United can teach me the way to play. I don't think it's going to be a big help moving now. Good luck to Lee Sharp. That youth training scheme's working for a lot of young players. It certainly is, James. It certainly worked for Cyril Knowles, because he was on it just after the war, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's done well for Knowles. Yeah, well, the young fella's gone on to a big stage up there at United. He and, is, uh, indeed. They, they love that type of player, so, you know, let's wish him every success. Southampton still bottom of the table, but chasing two cups. And the talented duo of Alan Shearer and Matthew Letizia both got England call-ups this week. Gabriel Clark has been to meet Guernsey-born Letizia. For Southampton fans, Matthew Letizia's call-up to the England squad this week was good news in troubled times. But in the Channel Islands, it almost merited a public holiday. His three older brothers could all have left and turned professional. But Matt was always the one who stood out 
and luckily for England, the one who opted out. It's very difficult to leave the island. Um, it's such a close-knit family over there and uh, the, the way of life is so easy and it, there's just no pressure or anything over there. It's, it's, you'd have to really live there to, to understand it. But, uh, I mean, I can understand why they didn't come over, but um, my desire to play football was so much that I had to. If Michel Platini had got his way two years ago, Letizia would have traced a French ancestor and lined up against England next week. But accolades closer to home haven't exactly been in short supply. And an old Saints in England warhorse is top of the long list of admirers Keegan. down at the Dell. Armstrong, Keegan, Shannon. That was marvellous. It might be a different day job now, but Mick Shannon still knows a thoroughbred when he sees one. For me, he's got class. He's, you know, he's the, the one-class player that, that Southampton's got. Uh, he's a match winner, and uh, that's what the game's about. And the game needs people like him. And I think England needs people like him as well. I believe football is an entertainment. And to a certain extent, I do go out to entertain. I go out and win games and everything. But uh, I think entertaining is important because people won't come and watch otherwise. Sometimes uh, you might not see me again for 89 minutes, but um, you just pop up in the last minute and do something that uh, maybe not everybody can do and uh, turn again. That's the way it mapped out on Wednesday at Stamford Bridge. Letizia's quick thinking and vision instigated Southampton's goal for Barry Horn. But either side of that, he did a pretty good impersonation of the invisible man. People call you a lazy player. <laughs> I'm only lazy when we're losing. Is that it? Uh, I don't often get complaints when the team are doing well. It's only when things start going badly that, that people tend to say I'm lazy. And you don't worry about the critics when they said much the same thing about the player who got you kicking a ball in the first place. One I had as a young son was Glenwood. Um, I've been a Tottenham supporter since I was about five, and uh, there was, to me, there, there's been no other English player with that ability to do We really should have had 150 caps, not just over 50. People maybe might be saying that about you, Matt. Uh, maybe you should have had a few caps by now. Um, I'm only young, sir. I'm only 23. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, um, there's a reluctance in this country to put, uh, to put young players in straight into the England side. I mean, they've got to be doing something exceptional. I know Lee Sharp got his chance uh, last season and he was doing exceptional things, but um, they tend to be a bit cautious about young players in this country. Well, it's important we give him a chance because I think he's like uh, Gazer. You know, I think that, that, that both of them are so talented. I mean, they're class to see him through. And uh, given a ch chance, given a fair crack, I think uh, you know, he, he could be so someone who, who could make England tick. Express yourself, create the space. You know you can win, don't give up the chase. All players who are, who are in and around the squad have got their eyes on the, on the European Championships, but uh, it's not the end of the world if I don't make it, and uh, like I said, there's America in 94. And if you do make it, will it, it, will it be a victory to an ex a certain extent for a player who's, who's stuck by his ideals all along the way? Um, I'd like to think so. I mean, everybody's got their principles in life. Um, I'm no different, and uh, I've got a view on the way the game should be played, and, and I'll go out and play it. If, uh, if the manager doesn't like it, then um, I'm afraid I'll get dropped and then have to battle my way back in the team. But uh, I usually come good in the end. Uh, well, does it come good in the end, Jim? I'm just thinking when he was, he was talking there that it reminded me of the great players that we've seen, like Worthington, Curry, uh, Rodney, Rod Rodney Marsh, Stanley Bowles, all those fellas who yeah. got a handful of caps between them. Yeah. Were like Letizia, they were very talented players. But there's more to the game, certainly more to international football, than maybe just turning it on, have a two or three minute spell, and think you've done enough. Well, I think when you're talking about international football as compared with football at club level, nobody really knows who's going to be a good international mm. until they actually play. Um, Letizia, I thought Matt has been a good player for a number of years and felt that he probably deserved his England spot maybe two or three years ago. 
Um, it might well come to him now. We'll have to wait and see. Well, but certainly, as you say, um, there are great players who have played the game, like Stan Bowles, people like that, who didn't actually do very well at international level. It'll be interesting to see what happens here. Well, he's got a tough one tomorrow in the FA Cup at Bolton. Yes. And he certainly can't stand around in that one, but we'll be talking about the Cup. Well, you won't stand around at Bolton, mate. <laughs> oh, freeze right. to death. Peter Brackley has come up with quite a few interesting guests over the season. And listen, Jim, I think he's got a bit of a puzzler really? for us now. Now, I wonder if you two know who the country's leading goal scorer is at the moment. Brian McClare of Manchester United, perhaps? John Aldridge of Liverpool. What about Jimmy Quinn of Northern Ireland, scoring a lot of goals for Swindon Town in the second division this season? Well, no, it's not any of those, I'm afraid. In fact, the name might not be that familiar to you at all. Want a clue, Greavesy? Well, it's here that he plays his football, helping to lead the revival of one of English football's most famous clubs. Steve Bull is the name, and his tally of goals for Division 4 pace setters Wolves has already reached 35 this season. This was one of his most memorable, scored against Hereford. Not surprisingly, his prolific finishing is attracting interest from higher clubs, but Wolves, naturally enough, are anxious to hold on to their most prized asset as they chase promotion. Steve, 35 goals so far this season, that's quite a record. Have you been surprised at how regularly they've come? Uh, very, very surprised, very surprised, but uh, I've got to give a lot of credit to Andy Much and the rest of the team. Like uh, They've been a great help, like, but uh, one man doesn't make a team. Like It's all the rest as well. What are, what are the factors, though, behind it? I mean, 35 goals is quite a record. It, I could put it down to hard work, say hard work, yeah. Well, his background, when he came, he's a, he's a Midlands lad, he's... Uh, he's uh, Played non-league football at Tipton, went to West Bromwich Albion, and we we invested sixty thousand pound for him in uh, uh, just over eighteen months ago, and he's he's done ever so well for us. It's been an investment that we've been very pleased with, uh, and he's come in as a little bit of a cult figure now with the crowd. Uh, they've always had traditionally always had good centre forwards here, and all right, it's all relative. We're in the fourth division, we know that, but the crowd have certainly taken to him, and uh, he's got some very special goals for us this season. He's not the sort of player that gets the little tap-ins from five yards, six yards. He's uh, a sort of player that's been rattling them in from from all angles and all, all over the place. And uh, we've been very pleased. He's, he's a straightforward lad, loves his football, typical black country uh, man. I'm sure that if he wasn't playing for Wolves, he'd be standing on the south bank with the rest of the lads. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a pleasure to have him here. Well, Jimmy Greaves, watching here, was uh, one style of, of goal scorer. What, what about you? What, what's, what's your style? Uh, I've got a style, really. Like, um, a bit I just more think belligerent, it, perhaps, than Jimmy. Yeah, a bit, uh, yeah. And I'm a bit, uh, a bit ferocious as well, in a way. I just wish I could calm that a bit. But uh, I think, uh, in the same way, I'm a, a bit like Greavesy. Oh. It's, um, we've had a look at him throughout the, the season up at Centra, up in the yeah. Midlands, obviously. We've been following him. He's been, he has been a hell of a good player, and he's scored a lot of great goals. Exactly. And with much here, as he's given a bit of credit for uh -huh. there, he, he's done extremely well. Certainly yeah. has. He's a great goal scorer, and of course, he, he talks like Mirandina, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering what the accent yeah. was, yeah. <laughs> It's the answer to our goal of the season competition. The trophies have arrived back on the table. And we've got to thank England manager Bobby Robson, who helped us assess the six finalists and choose the top three. Now, the final half dozen were all of tremendous quality, but we were unanimous about the winner. The minor placings proved more difficult to sort out, but our combined selection produced this result. In third place, Chrissy Waddle. Good goal, this as well, Sam. It was a lovely goal. It uh, cleared out, nobody running, and then Chris decides to make a move and looks up, sees the keeper off his line, chips it in. All in the mud, etc. Mm -hmm. A very good goal indeed. Well played, Chris. Yeah, high class goal, Jim. Yes, it was. In second place, Trevor Francis, the player manager of Queen's Park Rangers against yeah. Charlton. Now, Trev doing a. Doing himself an injury. I mean, he hadn't done himself any good at all with this one, has he? Let's be fair about yeah. it. But, but a great goal, nevertheless. Wonderful. And the goal. winner of first place, Alan McAnally of Aston Villa. Yeah, I don't think there was any danger of this ever being the, the outstanding the goal, yes. goal of the season, the end, because here Spinksy's punched it out and he takes on one player, two players. He's gone past the third, past the fourth. 
He's had to beat people, he's had to run the length of the field, or three quarters of the length. Great effort, a great goal. Well done, Alan. Well, Alan, it gives me great pleasure uh, from one Scotsman to another yeah, uh, to present you with this uh, goal of the season. Thanks very much. A really cracking goal, tremendous Okay, goal. thank you very much. Well indeed. done. Thank you. The bike of the only trophy we'll win this year. <laughs> well, actually, it wasn't your typical. Uh, I just hit it and I went in, Brian, type of goal. Can you talk us through it? Uh, we were actually defending at the time, and Millwall had a, had a free kick against us. And uh, it hasn't been played deep into the box, and big knives, the goalkeeper's come out and punched it. And luckily enough, it's come to I didn't go out the road of it that time. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's come to me, and the defender never really tackled me, and I've managed to turn, and I've just sort of... Keep going, keep going, keep your head down, don't look up, <laughs> don't pass it, and uh, it worked out for me. And I evaded a couple of tackles and then I uh, stuck in the net, which was great, you know. For those of you who didn't understand the McAnally Jocko <laughs> version, I gave mine earlier on.